is a thunder. You can taste it when you eat. Fashion head to feet. Plus my blindness too. Plus I can dance. I wanna know if, if you, you wanna do just how I do. Woo! My society is underdeveloping because of an alien system on our people now. So there's no music for enjoyment. There's nothing like love. There's something like a struggle for people's existence. So, as an artist, politically, artistically, the whole idea about your environment must, must uh, be represented in the music, in the arts. So really, art is what is happening at a particular time of a people's development or underdevelopment, you see. So I think as far as Africa is concerned, music cannot be for enjoyment. Music has to be for revolution. Our people fought for independence. I can't remember. It was 40s and 50s. Welcome to Earth Candy, food, fashion, flyness. I'm your host Jamila. From Lagos to London, Paris to Panama, Amsterdam to America, celebrations happen all over the world to honor Fela Kuti's musical, political, and philosophical contributions to the world, and I'm so glad to be part of this movement. I had a dynamic week of celebrating this musical genius by first attending the Broadway performance of Fela itself, and let me tell you, it is exciting from beginning to the encore. A total feast for the eyes and ears. Take a look. For those who haven't seen Fela, I insist you catch the Tony Award winning musical based on the life and music of the legendary Fela Anikulapo Kuti. Musically, Fela created the new style called Afrobeat, a revolutionary fusion of Yoruba, jazz, high life, and funk sounds. Despite being arrested over 200 times, and brutally beaten on several occasions for openly criticizing the corrupt military dictatorship in Nigeria, Fela remained defiant and went on to produce over 70 albums which became an inspiration to millions. After I got to see that fabulous performance, I had a chance to meet some of the Fela queens in an exclusive interview. I was completely starstruck. <laughs> Take a look. During the show, gorgeous women dance to Fela's music, adding to the visual spectacle of their production. Elaborate costumes and acrobatic movements punctuate the power and spirit of Fela's legacy. I sat down with Onika Phillips, Amy Graham, Iris Wilson, and Nicole DeWeaver for a behind the scenes chat on what it means to be a Fela queen. So during the show, like you guys are stomping and wiggling and just basically flying through the air for two hours straight and it is amazing to see. So I wonder what is your rehearsal like in preparation for the play? We uh, started off every day with a yoga warm up led by our associate choreographer Maya G. She would give us a yoga warm up and give us some body conditioning every single day to prepare us for the Broadway run. And then again doing eight shows a week you're going to lose weight, your body is going to tone, it's great cardio for us. Okay. So that's what it is. Okay. And again, on the tour, uh, we're moving from city to city, so we're just going into the theater, checking, and, and hitting the show every night. Which is a workout in yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in general, if we're prepping for the show, it's about 10 to 6 rehearsals, 10 in the morning to 6 in the evening, yes. um, to ensure that we have all the material, that we know all the material, if there are any changes that have to be made, that it's in our bodies, if there's new, if there are new cast members. Uh, in the United Kingdom, we had intense rehearsals, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. to ensure that to get we all came to together, each other. to get acclimated okay. to each other mm -hmm. and create an environment where we, it, the show would be just as stunning as it was on Broadway. Each of the dancers has their own style. The hairstyles are vibrant, and they're powerful and they're, they're, you know, very diverse as the women themselves. Did you get to choose the hairstyles that you wear for the play? Um, Design at the time saw my hair when Afri braided it for the off-Broadway run and used that design of hair to bring into the Broadway production. Mm -hmm. So I think her inspiration came from our 
individual looks. Okay. And yeah. actually, a lot of us actually we wear wigs, uh -huh. these front wigs. Well, I imagine and, so. So it won't yeah. cause so much strain on the hair. And the real like, hair. Yeah. But they really did an outstanding job. Our uh, wig mistress, uh, Cookie, she did a, an outstanding job creating the wigs to have the hair be as similar to our own texture as possible, so that it would look as realistic. As it, as it could on stage. Have you met any of the original yes, dancers? Yes, actually we did. Yeah. We recently visited Nigeria, the Broadway cast. We took the show to Nigeria, Lagos ah. in um, April, mm -hmm. and we had the opportunity to perform at the Shrine. We did a, a condensed version of the show at the Shrine, and there we met uh, okay. one of Fela's queens, Kevwe. Okay. Uh, we also, I got a chance to meet the woman that I play. I play Najite, that was one of Fela's queens. So I got an opportunity to meet her and her daughter that she has with Fela. Kevwe, at the end of one of the performances, she did come on stage at the end and she danced with us. So she seemed to be really pleased. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the significance of Fela's wives and his art and his activism? Well, I think behind every great man is a greater woman. I think that all men has a mother, right? And I feel like the source of all power comes from the woman. And I feel like if it wasn't for the queens, I don't feel like there was Phila. I feel more so that if it wasn't for Fela's American love interest, Sandra Isadora, there would be no Fela. She opened his eyes to many different political activists, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, different authors such as Nikki Giovanni, uh, singers Nina Simone, all these different people who spoke out against social social injustices. Even with that political commentary, he always had the element of what is an African woman on the stage. You know, the way that she moves, the gyration, the use of the hips is not necessarily something to be afraid of or something that is solely sexual, but it is simply a part of a visceral Africanism. And I think that's what his, his dancers and his DJs and his singers represented they were their voices were a part of the message their movement was a part of the message of being african so you know fela is inspiring you know wannabe dancers to take african dance classes i in my mind am a fela dancer and i'm just as good as y'all but just so i can be foolproof can you show me a step or two please <laughs> okay stop stop <laughs> So, all right, so you're just gonna put your hands here, uh -huh. here, here, mm -hmm. slightly bend over, mm -hmm. and break in the hip, and just go to the right, to the left, right, left, right, that's it, okay. to the left, to the right, right, right left, left, right, oh, okay. right, to the left, the booty, okay. and down. Do I move my hands or do I keep You can put your hands down. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you can add it up. 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 Nevertheless, I had a wonderful time listening to their experiences, especially the ones by THE Sandra Isidore. That was the cherry on top. In part two of Earth Candy Food Fashion Flyness, you'll see my final Fela Hurrah as I go to a party at Atlanta's Spread Love and Jumpin' Funk Celebration. You won't want to miss this. So until then, love Earth Candy. Food, fashion, flyness.